Hi, I'm Professor Melko, Chemistry PhD, and today we're going to talk about chemical reactions, mole ratios, and stoichiometry. Now, stoichiometry is a big, ugly word, but it's really not that hard. I'm here to make it easy for you. <laughs> please, please, hold your applause to the end. Let's jump into the lecture first. So there's lots of chemical information stored when we write and balance a chemical reaction. Okay, if you're still having trouble balancing chemical reactions, go back and watch some of my previous videos. But assuming we've gotten to the point now where we can balance a chemical reaction, let's think now conceptually what that means. All right, the chemical reaction as balanced down here, two nitric oxides reacting with one oxygen make two nitrogen dioxides. Okay, so you want to have this physical picture in your head, right, that there's actually molecules, right, here's a nitrogen atom, here's an oxygen atom, and it takes two of these things, so here's another nitrogen and oxygen bonded together, right, that have to react with an oxygen, oxygen molecule, and these three things combine in certain proportions, as shown here, to make these two nitrogen dioxide molecules. Okay, so you want to have this physical picture, not just with writing a chemical reaction and balancing it, but this picture of what actually is happening, what is colliding together and rearranging in terms of the atoms to make those products. Okay, so you can do this in terms of just molecules, so two molecules of NO with one molecule of oxygen, right? Or you can imagine the same ratio just multiplied by maybe a thousand, so 2,000 molecules combined with 1,000 molecules of oxygen, right? Or we can use Avogadro's number and talk about moles. So two moles of NO combining with one mole of oxygen make two moles of NO2, right? So the recipe is always the same here, that ratio, that is what the balanced chemical reaction is telling us. Now, we're gonna need to work with these numbers and these ratios to calculate and convert between amounts of reactants or products. Okay, so we can write this chemical reaction and read this as two molecules or two moles of NO gas reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of NO2 gas. So the coefficients are telling us this mole ratio, right? There's going to be two moles of nitric oxide for every one mole of O2. And so you can set up these ratios, which really are just unit factors that you'll recognize when converting centimeters to inches, right? or in this case, moles of reactant, maybe to moles of product, or moles of one reactant to moles of another reactant. Okay, so those are the mole ratios that we're gonna need to use as part of our conversions in this lecture. Now, one brief aside is the law of conservation of mass. Just like energy, mass cannot be created nor destroyed. And during a chemical reaction is no exception. So if we know exactly the masses of NO and O2 that are combining in the appropriate ratio, I then know exactly the mass of NO2 that I'm making, right? So if I know that it's taking 60.02 grams of NO to react completely with 32 grams of oxygen, then I just add those numbers together and I know 92.02 grams are produced, right? So the grams of product must equal the grams of reactant. Now the caveat here is this assumes that we only have exactly the amount of reactants necessary to react in the same ratio of say here, two moles to one mole. More frequently in chemistry, one of these might be in excess. Okay, and that's certainly what we're moving towards in this lecture and the next lecture, is that oftentimes in chemistry, you might have maybe 100 grams of nitric oxide, but you might have thousands of grams of oxygen. And that oxygen then is gonna be in excess, and we would say NO limits the reaction, okay? But if you know exactly the right proportions of reactants and how they come together in those grams, you can predict exactly how many grams should be produced because mass must be conserved. If all the reactants are used up to make products, then the mass of the product has to equal the mass of the reactants added together. So now let's get into some of these calculations. Here's a new reaction. We can write several mole ratios here as our unit factors, doing just like we've done on the previous slide with our other reaction. Okay, there's a bunch of different types of ratios I can write, and it's just gonna depend what the question is asking for or what conversion I'm interested in for which one of these I need to use. All right, so I can read this reaction. I see that it's balanced. I read it as one mole of N2 reacting with one mole of oxygen to make two moles of nitric oxide. Now, 
how many moles of oxygen react with 2.25 moles of nitrogen? This is an example question we might need to solve. And so if I'm given 2.25 moles of nitrogen, well, that goes here on the left side. I know I want to get two moles of oxygen. So I must know the ratio of moles of oxygen to moles of nitrogen, right? So I go back to this balanced reaction and this is the one I want here. Why is it that one? Well, I need to have nitrogen in the denominator so the units cancel here. And I need oxygen in the numerator since that's the unit I wanna to go to in the final answer. Okay, so to get this ratio, again, I go to the balanced chemical equation. Here, N2 plus O2 makes 2NO. And if I start with 2.25 moles of nitrogen, I need to go to oxygen. Then I just look to the coefficients. The coefficients here are implied to be ones. We don't write them usually, but they are ones in this balanced chemical reaction. So the ratio here, I put a one in the numerator because there's a one in front of oxygen in the balanced chemical reaction. I put a one here in the denominator because there's a one here in front of nitrogen in the balanced chemical reaction. Obviously, it's not always going to be one to one like this. It just works out that way in this case that for 2.25 moles of nitrogen, I need 2.25 moles of oxygen. And perhaps no surprise because we know they're equal amounts, they're equal coefficients here. Now, if you were instead asked how many moles of NO are produced, then you would take this 2.25 moles of nitrogen. And here I have to convert it to moles of NO, nitric oxide. So here the ratio I want, moles of nitrogen must go in the denominator, so it cancels. Moles of NO go on top, so I'm left with that unit. And now I look to the chemical reaction. There's a two in front of NO, so I write two with moles of NO. There's a one in front of nitrogen, so a one goes with the unit moles of nitrogen. And so I multiply across the top. I should make four and a half moles of nitric oxide based on this 2.25 moles of nitrogen I start with. Let's try a practice problem here. Pause the video and try this one yourself. Remember to balance the reaction first, then resume the video and watch me solve it. So the first thing we have to do in all these reactions is balance it, okay? I like to look at the amounts of nitrogen and hydrogen on each side in this case, and just count up. On the left, I have two nitrogens and two hydrogens. On the right, I have one nitrogen and three hydrogens, okay? I can already tell from these hydrogens, right, this two and three, I'm gonna need to look for a common multiple, okay? So I'm going to try to get them both to six. I'm gonna put a three in front of here, which makes this six, and a two in front of here to make this six. Now that two in front of NH3 has also changed the nitrogen to a two. And now I'm balanced. So the ratio is one nitrogen to three hydrogens to two NH3s. So now that I have balanced it, I can solve this question. How many moles of hydrogen react with three moles of nitrogen? Three moles of N2. I need a unit factor that gets rid of N2, so I'll write that unit down here. And I wanna to go to moles of hydrogen, so that must go in the numerator. I look to the reaction, one goes with nitrogen, and three goes with hydrogen. So now multiplying across the top, getting rid of my units, I'm left with 9.00 for sig figs, and my unit is moles of hydrogen, exactly what I want that unit to be. So the answer here should be 9.00 moles of nitrogen. This conversion, this mole ratio, right? Those coefficients are exact relationships, so don't affect sig figs. So the sig figs that I was given here must be the sig figs I end with. Let's try another one. Only this time you have to turn the words in this question into the chemical reaction, then balance it, then apply this mole ratio. Pause the video here and try for yourself. So liquid water reacts with calcium metal. I know the formula for water, and so should you, H2O liquid. This is reacting with, so I write plus, calcium metal. Okay, that calcium metal is a solid. To produce, so arrow, aqueous calcium hydroxide. And hydrogen gas. 
Now remember two things here, hydrogen gas, hydrogen is one of these special diatomics where it always comes in twos, so I write H2 for hydrogen gas. For calcium hydroxide, I have to figure out what is the ratio, right? How many calciums combine with how many hydroxides? And I remember from the polyatomic table that hydroxide is OH. But now I worry about the charges. Calcium, right here in the periodic table, in alkali earth, likes to be two plus. Hydroxide, my polyatomic table, says that's one minus. So I cross these numbers over to give a calcium one and an OH two. And I use parentheses here to group the hydroxides. And I don't write the one, it's implied. So the ratio is two hydroxides for one calcium to make sure overall the thing is neutral. Okay, so I have the formula now for calcium hydroxide. I have the formula for hydrogen, remembering it's a diatomic. I know the formula for water. I know calcium is just by itself. I don't have to worry about the charge on calcium when it's by itself like this, the charge is zero. Same for hydrogen, it's by itself, the charge is zero. Okay, water, the formula works out because hydrogens are each plus one and oxygen is minus two. That's where we get this two to one ratio in water. In any case, this is now the reaction. Written down the formula are correct. Now we go through and balance it. Okay, there's one calcium on each side, that looks good. There's four hydrogens on the right and two oxygens on the right. So I'm gonna need a two in front of here. And now the thing should be balanced. Four hydrogens, two oxygens, one calcium on each side. And now I can get to the final point of this question. Given 0.5 moles of calcium, how much water is used? So I wanna go from moles of calcium to moles of water. There is one mole of calcium for every two moles of water. How did I get that? Again, this molar ratio comes from the coefficients of the balanced chemical reaction. So there are two H2Os for every one calcium. And so my answer here should be 1.0 moles of H2O are used reacting with that calcium metal. Now, this molar ratio and that conversion is really one step of the process we call stoichiometry, okay? And stoichiometry and limiting reactant, which we'll get to in the next lecture, okay, is used a lot of times in chemistry. Most often, perhaps, in industrial chemistry or in chemical engineers, right? When you're trying to predict exactly how much reactant you need to get a certain mass of product, right? So a lot of times, in an applied sense, Right? In our familiar sense, we're not talking about moles, we're talking about grams. We want to go and weigh out, on a little balance, an amount of grams or mass of our compounds. And so if I know I need 100 grams of, let's say in this previous reaction, calcium hydroxide, how many grams of calcium do I have to go weigh out? How many grams of water do I need to ensure I can make 100 grams of calcium hydroxide? That's the point of stoichiometry. Okay? It's like accounting. It's a conversion process and, and math that gets us from grams of reactants to grams of product, or grams of one reactant to grams of another. What we've done thus far in the lecture is moles of one to moles of another. Now we need to go from grams of one to grams of another. It's going to involve as one of the steps this mole ratio, but we need molar masses as well. The important point is to remember, always convert to moles. If you're given grams, convert it to moles before proceeding. Now usually there's three types of stoichiometry problems. Mass, mass, grams to grams. Mass, volume, grams to liters. Or volume, volume, liters to liters. For this lecture, we're only gonna really talk about the first one, mass to mass, grams. Going to grams, and we're gonna concentrate on that. The steps that we're gonna learn in this lecture are equally applicable to these other types. So. Let's look at the four steps of this stoichiometry problem. First, you write and balance the chemical equation. Then you convert to moles. As I've said, if you're given grams, convert it to moles. Then step three here is what we've been doing thus far in the lecture. Convert moles of what's given to moles of what's desired. And then lastly, you use another molar mass. And so just to outline the three steps of the calculation, after you balance it, use a molar mass then use a molar ratio, like we've done earlier this lecture, and then use another molar mass. This is something easier to see in practice than it is just to read the text. So let's jump into some practice problems and see how this is applied. 
Use the unbalanced reaction below and predict the mass of mercury produced from decomposition of a mass of mercuric oxide. So I notice this is a stoichiometry problem because it's grams of one thing to grams of another. And I know I'm going to need to go through the mole. First, though, let's balance this reaction. I'll need a 2 in front of the reactant and a 2 in front of mercury. Now there's two Hg's and two O's on each side. Now that step one is done, I can go on to step two. Convert the given mass, 1.25 grams of mercuric oxide, into moles using its molar mass. This is something we learned to do in previous lectures, so go back and look at uh, molar masses and how to convert using molar masses from the previous lectures. For now, I'm going to get out the periodic table so I can add up this mass of mercury, 200.59, plus the mass of oxygen, 216.59. So the molar mass of HGO looks like this, and now I've obtained the moles of HGO. I get 0 0.00. 577 moles of HGO. Okay, so that is step two, solving for the moles of the thing that was given. Step three is convert this moles. So now I'm going to take this 0577 moles of HGO and convert it to moles of the desired substance. So let's go back and read the question. Predict the mass of mercury from HGO. So I know I want to go to moles of mercury here, moles of Hg based on the moles of HgO I'm given. And again, just like we've done earlier, I go to the chemical reaction that is balanced, I see that is two to two. So multiplying across the top, dividing by the denominator here, I get the same number of moles since that's a two to two or one to one ratio, that many moles of mercury. That's step three. Step four is now to take this moles of mercury and convert it to the moles of the desired substance using molar mass. So now I need just the molar mass of mercury, which my periodic table claims is 200.59 for one mole of mercury. Now I multiply it across the top and I should get a number like 1.16 grams of mercury. So that's it, stoichiometry. It's really just breaking it down into these four simple steps. Balance the chemical reaction, convert using a molar mass, step two, convert using the molar ratio, step three, and convert using the molar mass of the product or the thing desired in this case. Those are the three steps of stoichiometry. In the next lecture, we're gonna be doing limiting reactants, okay, and trying to figure out based on two of these stoichiometry problems, which one produces the least amount of the thing desired. In other words, what reactant is limiting the reaction, okay? So we're gonna be doing problems that are a little bit more complicated than one on screen here, but it's just the same process done twice. So with that, I think we'll end this lecture here. Use, uh, you know, some time to practice these concepts and then go on and watch the uh, lecture on limiting reactant. Otherwise, that'll do it for today. Next lecture, we'll get into limiting reactant. As always, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel on YouTube or catch me over on Twitch where I do office hours every week answering whatever chemistry questions you might have. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.